What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Thursday, December 3rd, 2020. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside Forbes 30 Under 30, a.k.a. the second best baby blues in San Francisco, a.k.a. the buzzed one at Tim Gettys. You just love the jingle. You know that it's Christmas so jingle? Nice. It is I so nice. I hate Christmas. I am a Grinch. I do we not know. like holidays of all sorts, so but much. especially especially Christmas. But I really enjoy that the, the 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 jingle there and the work the extra effort that nick scarpino did i don't want to tell the story too many times but i don't think i've talked to you about i haven't heard today. it i missed i i usually i try to listen to games daily when i'm not on them but the ones i missed on monday and tuesday well i guess i didn't miss they weren't i wasn't assigned anyways i was on calls kevin asked for uh kevin. the the christmas thing of course he had it commissioned because he is the king of christmas uh and so we got the music made and then i sent it over to nick but i forgot to do it until the last minute kevin remembered sure. sunday night to remind me so a lot of King of Christmas, Christmas vibes coming coming from Kevin right now. I so, wish I could uh, give it to him, but Gary Witta. But that's the thing. It's a big, it's a big I'm tournament right now. I'm not fighting for it. If he wants it, he can have it. You know what I mean? I just that's not the spirit You're of Christmas. You're just gonna roll over and give it to him, huh? If he wants it, like that's not the spirit of Christmas. God bless every one of us. See, Kevin's so willing, he'll give it to him as a gift because that's how <laughs> oh great Kevin God, is. That's weird. But no, so Sunday night, I hit up uh, Nick and I'm like, hey, man, I know it's hella late. Like, don't worry about this. Get to it whenever you can later sure. in the week. At midnight, 1230 midnight, mm. he said he slacks me a finished version that has way more effort than he ever should have put into it. But that's what you guys get. Maybe Nick's the king of Christmas. I don't know. No, Nick's the king. Uh, you probably texted him Sunday night and he was watching Curly Sue or some other fucking <laughs> shit movie. And he's like, oh, I guess I could do Wait, this. Hold too. on a second. Hold on a second. What the fuck is wrong with Curly Sue? How is that a shit movie? I don't know anything about Curly Sue other than I remember it being advertised a lot. Jim Belushi's in that, right? And I remember yeah. like, uh, no, I think I, I don't, I think I watched on Fox. No, John Belushi was long dead by the time you're right, Curly you're Sue right, came you're out. Right. Jim I, yeah, Belushi, Jim Belushi, was Belushi that's right. Yeah, yeah. Don't challenge me on Belushi Brothers knowledge. Okay. Right? I just watched that Belushi that. documentary, and Jim Belushi liked my tweet about it. So, big, Whoa. Thing, big thing for me. Big thing for me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about other big news, such. As Master Chief coming to Fortnite, Xbox Game Pass just getting warmed up in Sea of Thieves, adding seasons and a battle pass because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show over at patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. On patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames, you can give us your questions, your comments, your squad up requests, and everything under the daily video game sun. Of course, you can go to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames to get the show ad free to get it with the exclusive post show to get exclusive content and perks no one else gets of course if you have no bucks toss our way it's no big deal you can watch us record the show live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games if you're watching live you have the special job go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games roosterteeth.com and listening on podcast services around the globe each and every week day i'm playing with fire here tim because mm -hmm. i i you know i i we don't knock the desks anymore because it's all wobbly and it'll send reverberations into the other people who are doing calls in my house in space but and time in general i've noticed my desk wobbling i was like man the camera's wobbling more than usual and i looked down and i only got two legs on the tripod down mm. third leg it goes or tip forward third leg hanging off the back of the desk there. hell yeah gift. run that risk should i run it is that what i'm doing I can, no, I can you should straighten it out. Your framing is bad too. It's been clipping your hair. That's better, right? Hold on. Okay. And then I do that. Okay. There we go. Hey. Okay. Good enough. Uh, housekeeping a little bit for you. more to your left. Kevin, I said fucking housekeeping. I want to. I want to give the Christmas trees. A little bit more. They're just due. All right. Okay. They're just due. And Jen's yeah, homemade Christmas. TikTok uh, wreath thing she did here. That's just a tree. That's just the same tree you always have there. I at least took rubber boy. Uh, Respect took, the fucking plant, Greg. I took rubber boy and put Christmas lights on him. <clears throat> yeah, she did that upstairs and it doesn't look good. <laughs> <laughs> Does it look good on my end for what you can see? Uh, Yeah. Are you, are you happy with that? Are you happy with Wait, rubber Tim, boy? should I, I hit her up and see if she wants me to go help her get a Christmas tree today? No, you shouldn't. Uh, okay, I don't understand what has to do with TikTok, do but... Oh, no, no, no. Rubber Boy is not TikTok related. This uh, wreath, Jen, made by hand. Oh, that, that's, okay. She dried gotcha. oranges in the oven. She got some fucking stuff off the you know, Christmas tree things, put a rope in it. It's too much. We can't see it. 
No, I know that. I'm just letting you know. Uh, housekeeping, the Kind of Funny Games cast is live right now and predicting the game awards on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games and, of course, podcast services around the globe. However, remember, we will be live reacting to the game awards next Thursday. Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. Come watch all the shenanigans with us. Four hours. <laughs> Four hours, apparently, which seems absurd, but whatever. It'll be there. We're going to have a good time. We're going to watch it all. It'll be my first time watching the Game Awards with the Kind of Funny crew ever. Since Kind of Funny started, I've been going to the Game Awards, so I have never actually watched it as a crew. I'm very stoked to have it. If you miss it, of course, YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games. You can watch later. Go ahead. Subscribe, like, and share. Sure uh, you Kevin, can you show this next link for me for housekeeping? It's official. Um, you, I actually can't. I accidentally really? closed. I, I accidentally closed the folder that I have all the games daily um, docs in. So I'm trying you, you to find know, that folder. You can't do it. Well, I, how about you just go to the link? You just, is that all you no, need? No, you just need I, to go to the link. I, yeah, give me the link. Send it over assets. Kindoffunny.com slash fcf. Go to kindoffunny.com slash fcf. Oh no, that actually shit. Actually, I was linking you to the subreddit, wasn't I? Go to reddit.com no, slash the link r slash kindoffunny. It, where you want it? Just do you want it in Slack? In assets, yeah. I don't know. Slack open. I got you, Kev. You know what I mean? I'm over here doing my right. thing. Is right. that it? Is this? I don't know if this is the right link. There we go. Uh, That's it. Go there. Why, why would it not be the right link? You, you lie to me to, all the time. He likes to troll. <laughs> ah, ladies and gentlemen, as I was saying you can vote on our FCF jerseys. That's right. The Wild Aces jerseys are available. Three options for you to pick. Go to kindoffunny.com slash FCFU can vote for what our FCF team will be wearing when they take the field. Also worth pointing out, the FCF store is officially live as well if you want the first ever Wild Aces t-shirt and or sweatshirt. Those are there. Tim, what do you think of these jerseys? Vote number one. You like number one? You like that? That shoulder looks so good. It looks most kind of funny and most like Johnny Ace. Definitely not the coolest of But number two looks cool. It does. It does. My thing it, about it. Like, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. You've well, identity is all I'm saying. That looks the number two looks like a real football jersey. We need to have some level of like when people see it on the streets, they need to go. Ooh. And that's number one. OK, go for number one. Everybody go. Ooh. For number <laughs> one, as Tim says, uh, last I checked, it was winning. Somebody can you're wrong. If you go vote right now, once you vote, you can't see this, the results anymore. But it was uh, winning this morning when votes were starting to come in. Which one? Uh, number one, the one you want. Uh, but I also don't think you can go wrong. Person. Yeah, I, 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 agree. Agree. I agree. I agree. Uh, thank you to our Patreon producer, Blackjack. <laughs> Today we're brought to you by Upstart, DoorDash, and Hymns, but I'll tell you about that later for now. Let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. Six items on the Chad, put it in there. He gets a star for that. That was a gold star performance right there. <laughs> you love to see it. You love to see it. Uh, this is a visual one as well, Kevin, if you haven't opened your doc again. Have you opened your doc yet? Yeah, I got the doc open. What do you mean? All right, cool. Is Master Chief coming to Fortnite? It certainly seems so. Uh, yesterday, uh, the item shops started to leak for, first off, in the, while we were live yesterday, Kratos. Kratos uh, teaser images came in hot and heavy, showing that Kratos is coming to Fortnite. Seems to be 100% true. I then made the prediction that at Game Awards, they would come out and say, the, the Fortnite announcement would be Kratos, Chief, in Samus, all being announced for Fortnite uh, this morning. All right, actually, late last night, uh, news started to break again. We are on Hype X right now. We'll be getting a Halo collab too. If it's not scrapped, the skin is going to be Master Chief. Kevin, if you click on it, or I guess you can't, you, you, you click on it, Kevin, it'll get a little bit bigger. Uh, you can see we have, of course, Master Chief there as the character. His glider is the Pelican. Does that get you excited there, Tim? Oh, yeah, dude. He's a little, he got a little warthog there for one Lighter of his uh, emotes there. And then, yeah, he's got his, uh, what is that, Gravity Reaper? Gravity Hammer. Hammer, sorry, I couldn't. It's very pixelated. Ah, uh, there for his uh, pickaxe, uh, Ke uh, Kevin. If you want to go to the next one, uh, this is uh, Fortnite Wait, Battle on. Royale leak. So I think might have started it. What's the deal with the little warthog? Like when would I think that's an emote that this little dance? You see how it's got the little dance icon? God, up there? and I love it. Look at it. Yeah, it's, it's an so emote. Small. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cute. Uh, the B Fortnite Battle uh, Royale leaks on Twitter is are the people who put this out initially. I think this is what Barrett sh shared last night in our Fortnite channel. Uh, they say, here's some images of Halo cosmetics. These are confirmed to be real. So again, take it all with a grain of salt. As Hypex says, if it's not scrapped, this is what this looks like. I 100% believe it. I think this is all going to be a Game Awards announcement. Tim, where's your head at? Uh, the Game Awards stuff is the one thing I'm not totally 
locked in on. Oh, yeah. I guess they haven't actually fully announced this. So maybe because I was about to say, like, why would they hold off one when they've been announcing them so they haven't announced anybody? Back yet, to yeah. Back. yeah. Has Kratos been officially announced, or is that nope. still just nope, oh, okay, nope, okay, nope, okay, nope. okay, gotcha. Then yeah, that that does make a lot of sense. Uh what's interesting about this is you stick into the Samus theory because the in multiple ways. Samus is the one of these things that's not like the other when you have Chief Kratos and Samus, yeah. right? Like, if it was Chief and Samus, that kind of makes sense, but Kratos puts it on kind of a different level where it's like it should be Mario, you know, as like the kind of face of the company type conversation. Sure, but remember Having this said that, okay. it goes back to, like, I, I'm out, I'm totally outside of this shit, but you guys are, like, all about this Fortnite. It's a Fortnite household, including Joey. She's freaking out, and we were hanging out. She was trying to explain to me. She's like, oh, shit, like, Mandalorian, the theory is it's bounty hunters, and my first reaction was Samus Aran. So... It's. I think that there is multiple things leading to to Samus, even if it's not just the oh, it's the big three. The bigger question is, does Nintendo play nice? Because Nintendo, go Nintendo. That is the big question, and I think that that is what's so fascinating to see is that yeah, it's a bounty hunter season. They talk about these hunters. They're doing all these different things. I think you can make a case for obviously not a bounty hunter, but in a different way, Kratos being a hunter, obviously mm-hmm. Chief being a hunter, and then for Samus a bounty hunter but is nintendo down to share this stuff in a crossover collab are they down to have her running around with an ar shooting other people like oof, yeah i don't know i re- i think that honestly i that's the one i'm the weakest on that i think that they're standing in the way but then is it just going to be a kratos and master chief coming together to f- or coming at each other to fight in a trailer or whatever for the announcement because what i'd like to throw in here i mentioned this yesterday uh that during uh you know how jeff's been doing the zoom calls for the game awards right mm-hmm. he's been bringing on guests he brought on donald mustard of course uh the big wig for Fortnite that you see every year at the game awards talking about it and donald said something to this is going to be a huge deal at the game awards for Fortnite. uh what i did here is a quick google uh, i'm looking at i fire monkey who put all this together uh, on their twitter and says in a recent zoom call with jeff keely and donald mustard a few hints have been revealed about the future of Fortnite. this info comes from a source who would like to remain anonymous however it's credible the information came from who was on the zoom call there will be an announcement at the game awards for Fortnite. uh the game wars will take place on december 10th a new recording session with troy baker took place that's already happened because we know that stuff right uh this season is the biggest event uh they've ever done and it will change the future of Fortnite. and when asked about getting smart and when asked about getting Fortnite into the smash brothers universe donald muster simply stated he can't comment about it one of the things i brought up yesterday in a loose manner was this uh, the quote of this is the biggest event they've ever done and it will change the future of Fortnite." i think when you hear that coming off the back of the Marvel season as somebody who like, cause I, you know, I loved playing the Marvel season at the end there. We all we were super into it. You know, me, Barry, Kev, uh, bless Joey Roger, who Kevin keeps dragging into these things, even though he, I don't like him being on our stuff. All right. I'll say it. He's a part-time editor. He doesn't deserve to be around as much yeah, as Kevin. Drags him around. You know what I mean? He's good. He is kill good him. at killing. That's the one reason I'll let it keep happening. All right. He keeps me alive. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's what I need. I agree. Uh, <laughs> coming off the Marvel season, I was like, super, super jazz, super, super jazz. And then when they put out the battle pass and we got into it yesterday, it was like, oh, Mandalorian super cool. But I didn't buy the 25 levels. Like, I want to get to having Baby Yoda as my back bling, and I want to do all that stuff. But the Marvel season, everything on that battle pass was awesome for me as a comic book fan, right? So I know that's like obviously very much painted towards me, but coming off of having this giant crossover with Marvel and saying this is going to be the biggest season ever and change the future of Fortnite, I was expecting a little bit more at the announcement of the Fortnite, you know, multiverse, what they're doing. However, if they are going to move forward and at Game Awards or whenever, it's we have Kratos, we have Chief, and suddenly there's like no restrictions and like the Battle Pass right now is a bunch of uh, hidden stuff that you can't see yet because I'm you assume it's tied to maybe these giant changing events of what it's going to be. I'm very interested to see not only the game awards announcements, but what else they have up their sleeve for this 10 week period. Yeah, I think you're you're absolutely right about what you're saying because that's my gut reaction too, which is them saying this is going to be the biggest thing ever. It's like, damn, how are you going to beat the Marvel thing? Because that yeah. really was a full integration in a way that seemed extremely epic and collaborative, right? And I so far... This all from the outside seems very anticlimactic, and I'm a little bit surprised that it's as disjointed to have the big lead up to the Galactus fight. And then it's kind of just like, all right, cool, the new thing's out, but announcements are kind of just sprinkling. And the worst thing, things are well, again, leaking. they're leaks. Yeah, they're not announcements. Yeah, the leaks. I mean, Mandalorian was an announcement, right? Yeah, but he leaked. <laughs> oh, man, yeah, <laughs> During yeah, Marvel sucks. season, I knew it. I mean, like, this is, I, I, you know, that I'm a stupid moron, of course, but this seems to be, this is 
the case with I think having your game, and I'm being way outlandish here, I guess, but everything from Fortnite always leaks ahead of time. And I think it's because PC players are able to drill into so many different backend files and find like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that it damn, it just sucks, like timing wise. Like I wish that the the Fortnite season ended like the day before game awards and then they had that big thing. Cause like how cool would it be if instead of seeing these pictures of these characters randomly? Oh my god, Kratos can you imagine? run at, at Master Chief like unexpectedly? Like that's and, something and, that Fortnite hasn't had yet, in my what, opinion. What could be crazy, again, the biggest thing changed the future of Fortnite, right? Is if it is Chief and Kratos running at each other, but then it's also Marcus Phoenix, Phoenix. Mm-hmm. And it's also Uncharted or Nathan Drake. I'm just fucking everybody up today. But you know what I mean? Where it's like all of a sudden, like, was the pitch from Epic and Fortnite be like, hey, PlayStation, hey, Xbox, we're the biggest game in town. You know mm-hmm. that. You, there's no way you're going to fight us ever, blah, blah, blah. Why not make this your Smash Brothers? Why not start putting people into our games and let and everybody plays nice and go that way? That'd be yeah. fucking awesome and insane. And that would change the future of Fortnite if suddenly it was just like everybody's there. Yeah, the, I mean, the question there though is: the are the characters exclusive, or is yep. it? Do, do they play on both? Huge question of how of that game. how that's going to look. Yeah, is, is Kratos going to pop up on Xbox if I'm if I have them, or even can I buy them on Xbox? You'd say no, right? There's been content before that I am not that deep into Fortnite, right? Where if you equipped it from it was PlayStation Plus gear, I think, and if you equipped it, kind of funny.com slash wrong. Please keep me honest on this. That and then you saw it in another game, it wouldn't be there. It would just be like, you know, some other default thing or whatever. Yeah. But I mean that's a really hype idea. And that that is something that can at least rival Marvel in terms of characters and in terms totally. of like, you know, the 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 library and roster that they they would be able to dig from. Obviously so many IP things come into that. And it, you know, it took Smash decades to build up to what it is to be able to work all that stuff out and get those characters sure. in. But Fortnite's a bit different. Like they don't all need unique abilities and all that stuff. It is kind of to an extent just different skins. Uh, so I don't know. I'm I'm excited. I like that we don't know. I just wish that it was a little bit tighter of a turnaround. Oh, I wish of, we knew nothing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and that's the thing of like that, this kind of leaking shit always sucks. It, even if it wasn't like even if we just knew one of them, what mm-hmm. if you know what I mean? Like whatever, that would still. I was already predicting yesterday that Master Chief would be in it, but who knows? I'm still excited. I can't wait to see how they do it. However, oh sorry, you got something else? Uh, yeah, just real quick. Like, Please I mean, no, this, this damn, is, we're here to podcast, this, hang out. I want to put on some cream. I, uh, we're we're so fixated on trying to like group these things where it's like, oh, they're bounty hunters. Or, oh, it's console wars. But like, what if it's not like? What if their goal is just like to make the biggest collaboration of all time? Like, yeah. imagine a trailer where it is, yeah, like freaking. Mandalorian pops up, but then Kratos pops up, and then you know the Kool Aid Man pops up, and you know like, that was my hope for Furious. Like you know, I I, I wanted all I, Man. I wanted all my treats at once, which is not how Fortnite works, right? But I wanted it to be that when uh, Troy Baker Jones, right, uh, or Jonesy, uh, dropped in at the end of when they the teaser trailer ended, I wanted it to kind of be like uh, Endgame. Where like the multiverse portals open up and you know uh, Mandalorian walks out and then yeah Master Chief walks out and Kratos you know I wanted it all at once when it's going to be a you know more drip feed I guess as we get going yeah uh, however the nanobiologist writes into patreon.com slash kind of funny games just like you can and says so we now have a new Fortnite leak showing all of what may be coming in ma- w- with a Master Chief's skin a pelican glider fucking hell yeah. But is this more proof that Microsoft may have put too many eggs in their Halo Infinite basket? While this is an awesome collab, I can only see this as a crazy, crazy marketing blunder and inability to bounce back after the infinite delay. Uh, the games, the game on the back of the Xbox Series Xbox, 7-Eleven already had cups out to advertise it. And now this just feels like more promotion like, hey, Fortnite kids, this cool guy in Fortnite has a new game that's ju- that just came out. Go sub to Game Pass Ultimate and play it anywhere. Am I wrong to think this way? What other way could Microsoft have bounced back from the delay to not seem like they had everything riding on this game's release? Or is this just the new form of all leaders on stage? Uh, kind of show unity that we all have. Oh, I see all the leaders on stage kind of show unity that we all saw previously at the Game Awards, but for a much larger audience. Tim, mm-hmm. what do you think? Uh, I, I don't think that it really is the 7-Eleven type thing. I think that it's more of the latter of what you're talking about, where it is the big three. It's the leaders on stage type thing of Master Chief, regardless of the quality of games and the frequency of releases over the last decade or whatever, is still the face of Xbox. Like, And I don't yeah. think that that will ever change. 
uh, I just there's like the the legacy that is Master Chief that is Halo, right? And the association with the Xbox brand. Um, of course, we all hope that Infinite's good. We hope that it comes out. Period. Um, but <laughs> when it comes to like that being in Fortnite, it's just kind of it, that makes sense to me. You know, if a character who else were you going to have? If a character was going to be Xbox person, yeah, like take Infinite out of it, right? I mean, like, it doesn't matter whether Infinite's happening or not or where it is. If a Microsoft character was going to be in Smash, what would it be? And then you start talking. It's like, well, clearly now we have Steve from Minecraft and we have Banjo Kazooie. Both of those, in certain ways, I would say are technicalities. I think Master Chief would be the one that they would put in as a Microsoft rep. Yeah. I feel like Minecraft is beyond Microsoft. It's not, people don't like Microsoft owns them. People don't think associate, you don't associate it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And obviously, Banjo Kazooie, they associate with the N64 more so than they do the fact that Microsoft owns it. So, like Halo. It's the thing. Master Chief is the face. So getting them in Fortnite totally makes sense. For me, yeah, it's I, I don't agree with you. I think you're wrong to think this way, Nano. On this specific incident, obviously, 7-Eleven and the box are different stories. But for this, it's that, yeah, who else would you have? Kratos doesn't have a new game out. God of War 2018 was the last one. Sure, Ragnarok's coming out next year. I guess you can make the loose argument for it, but so is Halo Infinite. This mm-hmm. is just like you need people to represent the brand in this world and you're going to go master chief i think yeah obviously it would have been awesome i'm sure for xbox to have halo infinite out and be able to go do this but nah don't worry about it one uh second of the day nana also wrote in though to say you are correct greg uh the ps4 exclusive skin showed up by default as jonesy on other platforms so there Mm. you go Mm. tim Let's stay mm. on this Xbox train to to number two. Xbox Game Pass is just getting warmed up. This is Fraser Gilbert over at Pure Xbox. It was revealed Tuesday that no less than 17 games would be coming to Xbox Game Pass between December 3rd and December 10th. And it looks like there's still plenty to come throughout the month of December. Following the announcement, General Manager of Business and Content Planning for Xbox Game Pass, Matt Percy, took to Twitter to tease that the service is, quote, just getting warmed up ahead of the holiday season. End quote. We already know of a couple extra additions heading to Xbox Game Pass later in the month, including the massive batch of titles for PC in the form of EA Play on December 15th, but hopefully there's still plenty of to come, plenty of plenty to come. Interestingly, yes, or this is Tuesday's batch of official uh, Xbox uh, I screwed all this up, of official X game, Xbox Game Pass announcements signed off with the Xbox team telling fans it will see them at the Game Awards, which takes place next Thursday, December 10th. Tim, do you expect something big from Game Pass at the Game Awards? I mean, it's kind of you don't say things like that if it's not right. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Set expectations. Lo- set expectations, and when they're hype, like you got to bring the hype. Game Awards has always been a, a grand stage that you can really, really show up, or you can fall on your face. And I think when in terms of hype and in terms of announcements, and you know, for every Joker in Smash, you get a Fast and Furious Crossroads, right? <laughs> like, uh, I think that uh, Xbox last year really, really came correct when they debuted the Series X. How, and yeah, that, that was, was such awesome. a such an unexpected big deal to see the box to you know get some actual real confirmation of what this thing is, uh, even if it was just you know little bits. But if I remember correctly, that was also where the Hellblade sequel was. Yep, debuted right. Yeah, like, that's, from you. that's awesome. So. I don't think that Game Pass announcements can be that level of like, whoa. So them kind of uh, by the take you by surprise type, whoa, right? So them getting ahead of it and kind of being like, hey, this is what we're we're gonna show. I think that's pretty cool. I think that it's gonna be some some heavy hitter games, but nothing that's gonna like change the world. Sure, not change the world, but I'm with you that I think it's gonna be a big name. I think they'll have. I think that rather. I think since they've already gone with these 17 games they're talking about right now, I think at Game Awards you want to talk about some big games that are coming out day and date, or not day and date, but like imminently that are old AAA games. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Oh yeah, totally. And at this point, they're running out of those. It feels like when you look at the Game Pass list, it's kind of just like, damn, they got it. You, yeah. Like I, I would expect a game to be on Game Pass instead of the other way. It it's really does start to feel like the Netflix of, of gaming. When I am trying to watch a movie, the first thing I do is go to Netflix to see if it's there. I don't go to Hulu. I don't yeah. go to HBO. I go to Netflix, right? And over the years, that's become less and less. <laughs> things are just not there, but they used to be. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Game Pass feels like the glory days of Netflix right now, sure. where when I'm like thinking of an old game and I look for it, it's like, oh, it's on Game Pass for the most yeah, yeah. part. So Maybe it'll be Avengers. 
Spencer's got to go over one of it's got to be PlayStation Plus at or Game Pass one day. They're already coming off their drastically discounted <laughs> Black Friday sales, so we'll see. That's that's actually very interesting. I don't know the how with it, exciting that is. Like if that was like tied with the a big major revamp or something, yep. that would make that, sense. That's but right the now, thing, I think, it kind of be like okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think I think when they do do, they're like, hey, here's everything that's caught up in the next <laughs> giant thing we're doing. <laughs> do do. I think that's when you'd probably time it out with one of them, and then mm-hmm. people just be furious. Uh, number three, continuing the Xbox train, uh, Sea of Thieves is adding seasons and a battle pass in 2021. This is Richard Wakeling over at GameSpot. Rare has announced that its pirate-themed action-adventure Sea of Thieves will be getting a battle pass in 2021. Sea of Thieves Season 1 is set to launch in January and will introduce a plethora of new features for the Xbox One, Xbox Series X, S, and PC title. The studio shared the news on its YouTube channel, revealing that the new huge update will feature seasons, a new progression system, live events, and more. Each new season will last for approximately three months, offering a free 100-level battle pass for you to work your way through and earn rewards, such as player as player and ship cosmetics. Are you in now, Tim? Are you going anchors up? No, nothing could get me into this, but that doesn't matter. There are people that are in, and Game Pass is just going to continue making more, making sure that more and more people are in and are enjoying their time. Like, this is Game Pass working at its best. And when you combine these two stories that we just read, where it's like, all right, cool, we're getting some cool third-party hits, but we're also like stacking our roster with these games that are going to expand via Game Pass. Like that's yeah. a, that's a really cool proposition for for people coming in, and especially once we get to that point that you don't even need the Series S or X, and there is the inevitable Chrome or Cloud version of Game James Pass, on TV or, or it's on the different apps and it's on all that stuff. It's like that's. It's just that every month is just going to make this thing stronger until some point. It's just like, wow, like only value is only being added at this point. There will come a point where it all comes falling down and things start getting taken off and all that shit happens. But we don't need to worry about that right now. Not right now. Enjoy it while you can. Mm -hmm. Speaking of enjoying it while you can, you can't enjoy it anymore. Number four, the PlayStation Vita store isn't working. Uh, This is Ian Walker at Kotaku. Don't worry. I think it's only temporary, probably. Uh, And right now, I should. this is from yesterday, Ian Walker's reporting. I did a quick uh, Twitter search, which is not effective at all. Uh, And people are still complaining about it being down. So either way, I think it's temporary. But let's read and see what Ian has to say. Widespread issues with PlayStation Network on PlayStation Vita have kept players from downloading or transferring games to the handheld for almost 24 hours. Kotaku contacted Sony earlier in the day for more information, but didn't hear back before publication. The first sign of a problem was posted to the R Vita subreddit late last night when user my name is Potato 92 made a thread about the issues they were having downloading a previously purchased game from the system's PlayStation Store app. Quote, I went to download Yee's Origin on Vita, and it would not let me, giving me the error code NP22453 uh, for not being able to connect to the PlayStation Network within the time limit the post reads. Uh, Since then, that post and another just like it have been inundated with comments from other Vita owners unable to download their digital games. A similar thread was posted to Games Forum Reset Era this morning, noting that transferring games from PlayStation 3 to Vita is also broken. Uh, Testing by Kotaku exhibited the PlayStation Store issue several times over the course of the day. In October, Sony sent a wave of concern through the Vita community when it removed all Vita, PS3, and PSP content from the mobile and web versions of the PlayStation Store, eliminating a convenient way to purchase and manage new games for those older systems. Many interpreted this as a warning sign that the company's support for those platforms could be coming to an end. And now, with Vita downloads halted, concerns over digital ownership have spiked for Vita owners now facing difficulties making purchases or downloading games they've already bought. It's unclear what any of this means. Odds are decent that it's just a temporary PlayStation Network bug. RPG site staff writers uh, James Galizio uh, recently showed on Twitter that the PSP can still access the download list. Kotaku was not able to verify this in- independently. In addition, he correctly noted that the nifty yet star-crossed Vita is still seeing a trickle of game releases in Japan. So that's a good sign. I think, Tim, that's the takeaway from this is like it's right now like a funny one of like oh the vita store is dead it's clearly something they didn't mean to do like they yeah. message when they're doing shit like this before but it is the number one problem with being all digital that okay now it's just gone and fuck are they gonna do it and it is the number two of in 10 years when you turn on your vita are you going to be able to get to the store to download the stuff you want to get to anymore no 
Yeah. Like, unless somebody there really cares and is trying to preserve that stuff. And that no, is a Geo, Geo Corsi is gone. And, Geo and Corsi is thing. not that's, there trying to preserve it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At some point, it's like, uh, unless you got Jared Petty working for you, I don't know that that's. Well, he'd be trying to get ColecoVision saved. That's not, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 I don't know. Jared Petty seems like a Vita man. I don't want don't, don't invoke his name too many times. I don't want I don't want to bring down his draft. I don't, I don't want him coming in here. Can you call him? Sure. Call him and just, just ask him, are you a Vita man? And then hang up. <laughs> as soon as he says one word. <laughs> This is Jared. Jared Petty, it's Greg Miller. You're live on Kind of Funny Games Daily. How are you? I'm fine, my friend. How are you? Great. One question is very simple. Are you a PlayStation Vita man? I am a PlayStation Vita man, my friend. I love playing games on my PlayStation Vita. If you were at PlayStation, would you be like trying to save the PlayStation Vita store and making sure their games are downloadable forever? My friend, I just love playing great video games on my Vita, and I want to get them wherever and however I can. I am a cartridge buying guy, uh-huh. so I've got my big old stack of Vita cartridges that I'm very, very happy with and good. But I always want to be able to play games as long as I can on any platform. Okay, good. All right, we love you, Jared. Merry Christmas. Love you too. Bye. Bye. He didn't say I Merry Christmas. He, I didn't know I he's knew. part of the war on Christmas. Ah, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, Jared, he brightens my day. All right, so I've added him to the you. naughty list. Ooh. As King of Christmas, you're allowed to do that, Kevin. All right, suddenly this King of Christmas thing is is a little cool. <laughs> once you got a little bit, once you got a taste of that King of Christmas power, you were ready for it, huh? Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, let's move on to number five on the Roper Report. Uh, this is an interesting one. I put in Haven Review Roundup. If you remember from watching the Kind of Funny Games, uh, no, Kind of Funny Games Showcase, back in the day we had a co-op uh, RPG uh, futuristic game in there called Haven. Uh, it's been going for a while. It's been, you know, continuing to go. It's finally out today. Uh, reviews, I thought, were starting to pop, but I think IGN is the only one who gave a review. So there's no Metacritic for it yet, but it got an eight. So I wanted to, I, I, I was like, oh, this game we know from the game, game showcase came out. That's rad. Oh, it's got an eight. Let's put it in the review roundup. Well, then I found nobody else reviewing it except Kyle Campbell over at IGN who gave it an 8.0. <laughs> so everyone go to IGN and congratulate it. Find Kyle Campbell on Twitter. Tell him thank you for doing the Lord's work in reviewing video games. Kyle writes, with an unusual approach to role-playing games that focuses on the relationship no, I'm sorry, the relationship of its protagonist couple as not just the story, but also the mechanics, Haven stands out from every other sci-fi adventure I've played. Uh, were it not for soul-crushingly tedious rust cleaning and hillside foraging taking up so much of the campaign's runtime, Haven might have cemented itself as an all-time great RPG. However, the thrilling flow rides, harmonious combat, thematically appropriate take on co-op, and starting, starting, startling Lee human relationship between its leads make up for any low points above all else haven proves that love conquers all rad i i'm glad this held up it looks so cool of course you, like i said you're the couple you're flying through you're doing different stuff i got my code last night which sucked i don't know you know mm-hmm. what i mean that's probably why there's no reviews is because they weren't putting out code everywhere but i have it downloaded to start hopefully today but i'm glad it worked out at least Very for ign cool. but again everybody hit up kyle campbell say hey great job good job doing, doing the lord's work Greg, before we move on, uh, the chat has brought to my attention some breaking news that is not of the video game variety, but is of the very, very exciting variety. Warner Brothers announced an industry-shaking approach to distributing its films in 2021, revealing that it will be making its theatrically released films available concurrently for a one-month exclusive window on HBO Max. That means consumers will be able to watch highly anticipated releases like Dune, The Matrix 4, The Suicide Squad, Mortal Kombat, and more. Day and date on HBO Max. It finally fucking happened. It finally is happening. Greg is getting his way once again. Day and date, theatrical releases. I can watch here and pause to walk Portillo and pause when Jen won't stop yak, yak, yakking at me. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Rest in peace. This is crazy, man. Rest in peace, theaters. You won't be missed. But Kev, Kev, I'm with you, and this sucks. But you know what makes it kind of better? This means we're getting Space Jam 2. Space Jam in review? Yeah, I'm confirming it right now. Now, Let's Marvel, go, get off your asses and tell Disney to release Black <laughs> Widow on Disney Plus already, all right? Get off your asses. Get off your asses, Kevin Feige, and say, you know what? Here you go. Let's do it. Insane. This is freaking insane, man. 
Anyways, back to James Daly. I'm happy. I'm happy. Uh, And number six is a business bits roundup from Twinfinite. Speaking of Jared Petty, uh, Alex Gibson over at Twinfinite reported on this. Helldivers was one of PS4's standout co-op shooters. And today we've learned that developer Arrowhead Game Studios is working on a new IP for next-gen consoles. The news comes by way of a press release from Arrowhead that announces the studio is working, I'm sorry, is hard at work on a third-person shooter featuring next-gen graphics, innovative co-op, and agency for the community to alter the course of the game, end quote. The project is further described as, quote, AAA game uh, will share the satirical humor that fans of the studio's previously previous games know and love, end quote. Huge news there. I fucking loved uh, Helldivers. And so mm-hmm. the fact that they're doing an X-Gen co-op one, that gets me very, very excited to see what that's going to be all Helldiv- about. Helldivers is one of those games that I will always be nostalgic for because it, it came out right when we left IGN. And it was mm. like, I swear we did like 10 Let's Plays on it. Or it, like was, it was so much fun through, remember we could leave each yeah. other behind oh shit, yeah happened. yeah that was so fun yeah that was you know that was a simpler time where we could just play games and have fun mm-hmm. now i got fucking blessing yak yak yakking at me about a yak fucking, yak yak man he's it talking about cactus guy. jack it's not mcfoley and i hate it okay so i don't want to be a part of it and i won't be a part of it thank you very much uh then still at to infinite uh uh uh, Giuseppe Nelva wrote today we he- heard that a new studio was founded by developers who recently left Sony Interactive Entertainment Japan studio the team named now Tim how would you help me here the team named Bake 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 B-O-K-E-H it could be Boke 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 is a uh, yeah Boke it's it, it, it's Boke like uh camera aperture thingy oh that doesn't help me at all the buddy. blur in the <laughs> background the Boke yeah so Boke Bokeh. Bokeh is what we're Bo- saying. Bokeh. Bo- Bokeh. No. Bokeh. Bokeh. Yes. You just say it wrong. I'm saying the way Tim was saying it, or I'm saying the way Kevin was saying it, because you're both saying it different. It's Kevin's the Bokeh wrong. effect. Bo- yes. So is Tim, say it. Yes. Let me just say it real quick. Bokeh. Bokeh. That's what I was saying, wasn't it? Anyways, the team named Boca Game Studio is led by uh, Kichiro Toyama, uh, whom you may know as the director of Gravity Rush, Silent Hill, and Siren, uh, c- together with uh, Toyama-san, uh, the new studio will count at will count on uh, Kazunoba Sato and Junya Okura, uh, who also worked on Gravity Rush and on games like The Last Guardian and Puppeteer. Uh, the video also mentions that many people uh, who have worked with the developers mentioned above are also joining the studio. So good news there. Mm-hmm. Those are all great games. I want yeah, to see what right. happens next, and I'm glad, it's cool to see them get out and do their own thing and not be underneath Sony. They can go make whatever they want now. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. And good job to Infinite on these two stories that I would have missed just reading anywhere else. Jared Petty was right about you. I talked a lot of shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> because he had that big Twinfinite money that he threw around, but here we are. Everything here is we are. okay. Speaking of everything being okay, Tim, Mm-hmm. Over on patreon.com slash kind of funny games, everything's okay each and every day. Of course, you can go over there to get the exclusive post show we do with each and every episode. You can go over there to submit your squad up requests and be part of the show. And of course, you can go over there to get the show ad free. And speaking of ads, Greg Way. This episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily is brought to you by Upstart. There's a lot of economic chatter right now about the state of the market. Is it recovering? How long will it take? Have we seen the worst? But if you're struggling to pay off high interest credit card debt, you can't wait for those answers. You need to take action. Now with Upstart, there's actually something you can do today to help fight off high interest credit card debt. Upstart is the revolutionary online lending platform that knows you're more than just a credit score. Unlike other lenders, Upstart can reward you based on your job history in the form of a smarter rate. As me, Greg Miller, someone who took out a loan that did not do any of this back in the day, this would have been very helpful. Uh, Upstart lets you skip going to the bank because it's completely online. They offer loans from $1,000 to $50,000, so you can consolidate your debt into one easy fixed rate payment. Upstart makes it fast and simple to check your rate. Since it's just a soft pull, it won't affect your credit score. The hard pull happens if you accept your rate and proceed with your application. The best part, if your loan is approved and accepted, most people get their funds the very next business day. Over 500,000 people have used Upstart to pay off credit cards or meet their financial goals. Free yourself from the burden of high interest credit card debt and get back to using your money your way with Upstart. See why Upstart has over 6,000 five-star reviews on Trustpilot and hurry to upstart.com slash kfgames to find out how low your Upstart rate can be. Checking your rate takes only a few minutes. That's upstart.com slash kfgames. Your loan amount will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Not all applicants will qualify for the full amount. That's upstart.com slash kfgames. 
DoorDash is our next sponsor. Between never-ending laundry cycles and incoming emails, you've got plenty on your to-do list. Give yourself one less thing to worry about and let DoorDash take care of your next meal. DoorDash is the app that brings you food you're craving right now right to your door. Ordering is easy. Open the DoorDash app, choose what you want to eat, and your food will be left safely outside your door with the new contactless delivery drop-off setting. With over 300,000 partners in the U.S., Puerto Rico, Canada, and Australia, you can support your local go-tos or choose from national chains, uh, your favorite national chain restaurants like Chipotle, Wendy's, and the Cheesecake Factory. Uh, Kevin, toss up the Buffalo Blasts. Many of your favorite restaurants are still open for delivery. Just open the DoorDash app, select your favorite local restaurant, and your food will be left outside your door. DoorDash deliveries are now contactless to keep the communities they operate in safe. Right now, our listeners can get $5 off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter the code GAMES. Uh, of course, I use this to order my wings all the time from Halal Plus. So you should order from them too if you're in that Bay Area, I guess. Uh, that's $5 off your order and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and use the code GAMES. Don't forget, code GAMES for $5 off your first order with DoorDash. And finally, it's 4Hims. 4Hims.com is all about men's wellness. Uh, we all know the story. Andy and Nick wanted to maintain their own wellness, so they looked to Hims to keep their hair full and healthy. And I can confirm, as somebody who has run my hands through both of their hair, it is thick healthy and beautiful uh through hymns you can get the prescription medication that treats erectile dysfunction as well real science real solutions this could cost hundreds of bucks i'm sorry this could cost hundreds of smackers if you had to go through the doctor or the pharmacy <laughs> not so with hymns hymns makes it simple and affordable no embarrassing conversations no expensive appointments just answer a few questions online about your medical history and a provider will confidentially review if approved your medication is shipped directly to your door in discreet packaging and shipping is free no more searching online for answers to questions about erectile dysfunction or sexual wellness. Just go to your HIMSS account and ask a medical professional you trust. Try HIMSS today by starting out with a free online visit. Go to 4 slash funny games for your free visit. That's 4 slash funny games. F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash funny games. Uh, prescription products are subject to medical approval and require an online consultation with a medical provider who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. See the website for full details and safety information. Remember, that's 4 slash funny games, games, games. Tim. Yeah. I'm excited mm -hmm. for my next order of wings from DoorDash. Oh, yeah. But that dinner is so far away. If I wanted something more immediate, say what came to the mom and shops, where would I go? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show host each and every day. Do, 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 yeah. yeah. Out today. Haven is on Xbox, PC, and PlayStation. Uh, Mortals Phoenix Rising is on Xbox, PlayStation, PC, and Switch. Fogs is on Xbox, Fogs. PC, <laughs> Xbox, -O -G -S. PC, OGS, PlayStation, and Switch. Wildfire is on Xbox, Switch, and PlayStation. Wonder Blade is on Xbox. Per Aspera is on PC. Uh, Beyond Chronos Saves Humanity is on Oculus Quest and Rift today. And then Ninja Chow Down is available now on iOS. Uh, new dates for you. Elva, the Eco Dragon, leaves Steam Early Access on December 18th. Uh, Grow Big or Go Home is coming to Steam on December 18th. Uh, Bless Unleash begins its next closed beta on December 14th. And then Shoot One Up DX is coming to Xbox One on December 4th. Bless Unleashed. What do you think that is? It's Blessing finally, you know, unleashing his trophies. Of course, why this man hides his PlayStation trophies from all of us, nobody knows. And there is a movement on Twitter that many people are a part of to have uh, Bless finally own up to it. PSNprofiles.com slash Merck City 64. What is he hiding? Let's see what if he's he changed hide? it yet. What is he what hiding? The secrets? What, what do you have to hide? And a lot of people have been like, oh, he's, he, he's hiding cyberpunk. No, no, this is, this is not that. I, I wouldn't, if, if we were hiding our trophies for a review, I would tell you, I wouldn't even bring this up. He's just hiding his trophies, ladies and gentlemen. What does Blessing <laughs> have to hide? That's what I want to know. What do you have to hide, Blessing? Everybody, Blessing Jr. on Twitter, tweet at him. What do you have to hide? Release your trophies. Let's get some reader mail in here. Watch this please, taste of please. the funk that is blessing out of my mouth. Oh, James, so James writes in to patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says, I received my collector's edition of Cyberpunk 2077 early yesterday from Best Buy and posted pictures of the contents in a thread on Twitter. I do not intend to stream the game, give impressions, or spoil anything. 
I woke up this morning and the entire thread of images was claimed by the copyright holder. What do you think? Um, sorry, what do you think is and is it okay uh, in this scenario for both me and CD Project Red? I've never received a game eight days early before. <laughs> I assume you saw this yesterday, Tim. That mm-hmm. people had it, the Best Buy was like, you know what? Half at it. And they just sent yeah. out a whole bunch of people. And everybody's like, ah, what the hell's going on? Lots of people were having this run into to their things. Where, where do you fall down on now? Yeah, for uh, yeah, James to wake up and have his stuff disappeared. You know, this is actually a, a really tough subject that I don't think that I have a educated enough opinion on to to speak authoritatively because i've thought about it a lot and i think that there's the two different sides there's the side of just like hey it's yours you should be able to do whatever you want but then there's the other side of like yeah but there is there's embargoes being broken there's you know things that are being like street dates that are being broken that the copyright owners kind of like should be able to control because it is their product um so that the the whose rights is it i think kind of gets complicated um it's a weird thing where i and i I just want to be careful with how I word things because like this is such a sensitive subject, but yeah. I feel like you should be able to post it, but they also should be able to take it down. If that makes sense. That does make sense. I think, I think that does. I think for me, I'm on, if you want to follow along, everybody, you can go to at very super Jameis at very super Jameis. So famous, but with a J you'll find James's profile here. And he has it all detailed in some of the articles he was up. And yeah, what it, basically what's happening is right. His, First thing is uh, from 23 hours ago, right? Yeah, 11.44 a.m. December 2nd. It's here. Uh, Best Buy didn't follow the note. At, and Kevin, do you want me to s- send this to you? I'm sorry. I should be since we can be visual. I'm sorry. Is this in the doc? No, no. This is something that's happening live right here. I just put in oh, assets. Yeah, if you, you can just scroll through it and you'll see what's going on. But if you go to the first 23 hours ago, you'll see it. But it's here. Best Buy didn't follow the note. Uh, hashtag Cyberpunk 2077. And then it, there's the shot of the box. But it says here, do not sell before it's December 10th, photo, 2020. Of him in the in the hat, yeah. I yeah. uh, do not sell before December tenth, twenty twenty. And then he, as you go up the top, or as you start scrolling backwards, you run into all these media not displayed, and like opening the box not displayed. This is so cool, not displayed. Front and back of the game box not displayed. <laughs> Goodies box, and like it's just him doing an unboxing of the thing, and all of it being in, taken away, right? But then he has this one screenshot here that is. Here we go. Interesting that I can't share screenshots from the PlayStation Five. So it's a shot of uh, his TV screen. It's still there, uh, you know, him getting one of his rewards that I won't for linking his GOG account. It's still there. It's the, bo- the just the PlayStation 4 box of Cyberpunk with his PlayStation. It's still there. So it is very much CD Projekt Red being like, you can't show what's inside the box. And so the ones who fucked up here and violated this are Best Buy. So yeah. it's really fucking, it's really weird that this can go on, right? This is this image has been removed in response to a report from the copyright holder. It's not a good look. It's not the worst look, though. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm with you where I understand both sides of it, but I also feel like, what are you going to do? Like, it got, he has it. He paid for it. It's his product. He should be able to put the photos out because that's how it is. Like, he didn't sign, like, you know, like, I shouldn't say we. When we sign an NDA for a game, right? When we t- when I do anything for anybody, PlayStation 5 or what will be for a Cyberpunk or whatever, you sign an NDA and you agree not to show stuff until the embargo date. Not to, you know, there's usually like you think of like Miles Morales, there was tiered stuff of like you can talk about the game, but you can't show anything. When you do show stuff on this date, it has to be before this point, all that crap. That's me as a professional doing my job. That's that's the transaction I've entered into and my company's entered into. For James, who just bought the fucking game and got it early from Best Buy. That's a fuck up on Best Buy's part. And I don't know. Yeah. What's, I don't know what cyberpunk can do to, or or what CD project red can do to Best Buy. But I feel like, especially for, I I guess it's this thing, you know, it might be a little bit hard for me to find in a, in a, in a pinch here, but let's see. Uh, Cyberpunk had put up a thing that was basically like, well, they put up a lot of stuff. Obviously. (laughs) Here we go. Here's, here's what we go. Uh, December 2nd, which is yesterday at 10 16 a.m. So, as all these things were going out, but before uh, James's po- initial post, that Cyberpunk put out this tweet that's an image that I'm reading from. Your Cyberpunk 2077 videos and streams before release. We're getting closer and closer to the launch, and chances are some of you will get your hands on a copy of Cyberpunk 2077 before release day. However difficult this might be for us to achieve, our ambition is for gamers all across the world to have the same spoiler-free experience at the time the game releases. This is why we kindly ask you not to stream slash Let's Play or release any similar content before December 9th, uh, 3 a.m. Pacific time. 
We will send Max Tack, parentheses, you know, the guys who take down videos, after everyone who does. After that date, however, uh, we would love if you streamed everything you like, like there's no tomorrow. It's 2020, and who knows? Maybe there isn't. Yeah. I, I don't know. Again, this is a very complicated thing. Like, it reminds me a lot of the Last of Us yeah. leaks when all that stuff happened and those things were being taken down. And it's like there's an argument can be made where it's like, okay, well, people didn't buy that game. It's okay, but what about the people that did pre-order it that are posting that stuff? Like, at what point is it okay? Because somebody did something wrong, whether it's Best Buy or somebody leaking Naughty Dog shit. Somebody fucked up and the throwing up my hands excuse of like well i i just bought the game i just came across the footage i just whatever it's like how much does that hold up you know i think coming across the footage or whatever doesn't hold up i think having the game delivered to you by the company you bought it from does and i like that's the thing where i understand 100 percent what cyberpunk's trying to do i understand 100 percent what cd project red's trying to do i understand we want to protect our vision we don't want the game spoiled for each other However, I think that's why it should end at, that's why we kindly ask you not to stream or let's play or release anything before December 9th, period. Though we will send Max Tack after you. Is that the look you want? Like, I mean, why not? I don't know. Like, the, my thing is, I feel like they're saying that. It's not like it's some crazy surprise and they're like suing people. That, like, and again. that's the and for the record, for the record, for the record, if I may, the one thing I do appreciate about all of this is, and I could be wrong, please again, kind of find.com slash you're wrong if I'm wrong, is that they're not copyright striking. They're just taking the video down. In the case of uh uh James here, right? He's just like, oh, okay, like they put down the you know, he, I, he had a comment somewhere, maybe it was a tweet I saw. Yeah, okay. Uh it's yeah, oh, I guess this is this is a different thing, right? I, th I thought it was in reaction to that. It, they took down his media. He still has the media on his phone, theoretically, or whatever. It's like, I, at least they aren't banning his. They aren't banning his Twitter account. They aren't striking his account. They aren't taking down his tweets. They aren't. You know, I mean, there's a whole bunch of like really shitty ways it could go. Yeah, yeah. It, it, this is just one of those things where it's like, uh, you can get mad at it, or you can look at it and be like, okay, but why did this happen? And I think that there is a very clear reason why this happened. It is backed up by a statement they put out, right? And didn't that statement come before this? Or was it the came before James? It came before James's and it's, I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure when the other one started to pop when I started, when you started to see it. Yeah. I mean, regardless, there was a statement made. So it's like, it's clear why they're doing it and you can agree or disagree with that. But I mean, whatever, that's just like, there are just certain facts here. Sure. And like that they, they said that and they're well, going to act that like, way. No surprise. I'm not, for the record, I'm not like mad at anybody. Like yeah. I get it. I understand both ways and I understand how hard it is to slice. My way would be like being more mad at the Best Buy than anybody else. But I understand like you do want to keep the cat in the bag the best you can, but I don't know. And then I, the, for James is a very specific thing. Like it's him unboxing the collector's edition. It's not even him playing the game. It's not spoilers. It's what's in the collector's edition box, which I didn't order the collector's edition, but we knew, right. Didn't we, we've seen, product marketing shots of that haven't we i would yeah think. i would assume. I, still though slippery slope stuff of, like, very slippery where, slope where no no you're right you're right you're right, right. i don't know it's again it, this is only complicated because there's the political side of the conversation of your right to speech and your right to all this stuff but it's just like it the, god damn it kevin did you do that <laughs> no what do you mean what happened was your dick talking it looked like your dick was talking did no you the, my door theme? My doorbell just rang and the, the dreidel, dreidel, dreidel song played. Aww. I did talk to Cool Greg about how to do it and that he should make sure that you do it. So you're not only the king of Christmas, you're just the king of the holidays. Seven days of Hanukkah, everybody. We got, a, we got a, a multicultural. Wait, wait. Uh, to go back to the story we we're talking about. Yeah. Um, it's. I, I feel like it's kind of bullshit that like. A product can arrive late, and it's just like, hey, man, sorry. It's not like you're getting money back or anything. But if it comes early, it's like, oh, you can't you can't do whatever you want with it. Like, that seems fucked up. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't get my shipping back if it comes here late, you know? Like, if I wanted this game, and I get it the day after it's supposed to come out. But, like, this guy got it. It's not his fault he got it. He should be allowed to post the images that he wants. I don't know. I feel like this is a weird place. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's great. Uh, you know what I mean, guys? 
Like, I, I, I don't know. It, it's it's complicated stuff, but it's like, it's out in the wild. This guy owns that box. Like, this isn't, he's not posting videos and stuff that, like, the copyright rules are all w- wanky about. Like, he owns the box. He can post the images of his box. Like, it's crazy that, like, they hit up Twitter and Twitter took it down. I mean, Twitter has the legal right to do that. And if they're agreeing with uh, CD Projekt Red, like, that's Twitter's up to Twitter's discretion. But it is just like, it seems kind of like a weak argument to be like, hey, uh, we don't want that out. It's like, well, then you shouldn't have sent it. And it's like, oh, well, they, Best Buy sent it. It's like, all right, well, you agreed with Best Buy yeah, that they were going to handle Buy. things. They're your partner. Yeah. They're the ones Best Buy fucked up. This kid didn't fuck up. This kid can like should be able to post the images of his the shit he owns, in my opinion. I agree. But I understand. I, I I feel like it would have gone over better if it was just an ask. Not even gone over better. Nobody really cares. I haven't seen people like up in arms about this or anything. I digress. Slippery slope. Mm-hmm. Tim, we ask people watching live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames to go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames. Uh, Roosterteeth.com, listening on podcast services around the globe. Nanobiologist has a foul ball and then a swing and a miss. So I'll give him both those right away. Uh, nanobiologist goes, after doing some, re- some further research, these collab skins in Fortnite may not be part of the mystery unlocks. Uh, the collab stuff might be skins only. because And then he goes into the battle pass of like, it's a banner that's hidden. It's an emoticon that's hidden. Yes, I, I knew that when I said it. I'm sorry. You will definitely have to pay for Kratos. You will definitely have to pay for Halo. My hope is that the stuff on the battle pass isn't going to be them, but it'll be them related. But I get a Kratos spray paint now that he's in the game. You get a Master Chief, you know, uh, you know, emote or whatever you throw up. You know, there's a way to like do it with the battle pass. That sucks. Oh no, because Sony and Microsoft will want to make hella money off of this. Oh, like, I guess you could do something really specific. But damn they, it! <laughs> but, like, you go through and it's money. it's banner, emoticon, spray, emote, outfit, wrap. Like, I mean, I think it'll be definitely. I don't think they're going to toss those on the battle pass, but I do hold out hope that it'll be something very very cool that they put on the battle pass in place of it or whatever. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, then nanobiologist is complete swing and a miss as he tries to nail me but fucking fails is Greg there's eight days of Hanukkah no nano I didn't fucking say seven days of Hanukkah I said Hanukkah's in seven days it's one week till Hanukkah all right Everybody chill idiot out. <laughs> you <fucking laughs> he got moron. you Ooh. this is my fucking doorbell man but happy just, Hanukkah nanobiologist some shit uh, and then Blank, uh, yeah, Blank wrote in and said, Max Tech is a group of hardcore cops that are in the game. It's a reference to the game. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. I have no idea what kind of Twitter police you send after people to try to get them to take down their videos, but there you go. Yeah, that's funny. Oh, yeah, that makes it a lot like funnier and not, you know. Yeah, I just, I mean, once I play delicious. the game, I'll fucking know. You know what I mean? But stop making references to the game I don't have. Had this uh, kid played the game, we would have known. We would have known, you know what I mean? I, that, see, and that's the thing. It's on CD Projekt Red. If they'd already sent us copies of the game, if we had a majillion copies of the games here, if we were all playing the copies of the game, mm-hmm. we would know. Yes, like, oh, yeah. clever. clever. Majillion. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. Remember, each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. However, the show is not over. We have a post show on patreon.com slash kind of funny games that you should come on over and check out. Of course, if you went to patreon.com slash kind of funny games, you could get each and every episode ad free along with the post show and you could have a great time. However, if you want to have a bad time, you can go to youtube.com slash kind of funny games, roosterteeth.com, podcast services around the globe. Tomorrow, we'll be back to close out the week with myself and blessing at Oye Jr. Will the coward have unlocked his trophies by then on PlayStation so we can all look at them? Probably not, but we'll see. I've been surprised before. If you're watching live on Twitch, up next is In Review Karate Kid. Mm -hmm. If you're coming to the post show with us, head on over to Patreon. Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you.